Hello everyone, I've decided today to give you part 2 of mistakes made by learners or speakers of English. Stay tuned. Before we get started and go through the mistakes, I have to remind you that you should never feel embarrassed about making mistakes while speaking for two main reasons. Firstly, as we've seen in the previous video, mistakes are part of learning because they show us where we have to improve. Secondly, not all mistakes are intolerable. As far as you can communicate the idea, mistakes are not that big of a deal. But if a mistake hinders our communication, then we need to reconsider it. Our first mistake is the present tense subject verb agreement, especially with the third person. For instance, my mother likes pets. English speakers usually tend to forget the S with the third person, he, she, it. In this case, with a simple present third person, we have to say my mother likes pet. Bear in mind though, this kind of mistakes do not hinder communication. It is still understandable, but it is better to get it right. The second mistake is the misuse of for and since. This is a bit tricky, so pay close attention. We frequently hear English users say, I live here since four years. This is wrong. Let's make a point here. We use since to talk about an exact point in time, a year, a month or a day. For instance, I have studied English since 2015. However, we use for to talk about a period of time, be it short or long. For example, I live here for four years. The third mistake is confusing the present perfect with a simple past. This can be delicate even for some advanced learners of English, so pay attention. For instance, last month I've been to London. This is totally incorrect as it uses the past time phrase with the present perfect. The use of the past time phrase means that the action is finished and this is the past simple. The present perfect, on the contrary, denotes the link between the past and the present, which does not allow the use of the past time phrase. Here, we have to say, I went to London last month or I've been to London. I know this is a bit confusing, but to understand this, you need to be familiar with the present perfect. If you don't know what the present perfect is, I will make a detailed video about it in the near future. The fourth mistake is the misuse of the infinitive of purpose. This one is really important as we need it every single day. But what do we mean by the infinitive of purpose? We generally use it to explain why we do something. This is an example. We study to learn. Other examples are we eat to live, we sleep to rest, we work hard to succeed. So too is the infinitive of purpose to determine why people eat and sleep. But what is the issue with this? We often hear speakers of English use for instead of to. For example, we sleep for resting or we eat for living, which are absolutely incorrect. The fifth mistake is used by so many speakers are writers as well, especially when ending the formal letters. What I'm talking about is, I'm looking forward to hear from you soon, or I'm looking forward to receive the payment. Guess what? Both sentences are wrong. Even I'm looking forward to meet with you is wrong. I will tell you why. First of all, you need to know that the phrase look forward to means to be excited or interested. And two in that phrase is a preposition. What you should know about prepositions is that we must follow them by an object or in simple words, a noun phrase or a verb in the ING form. Example, I'm looking forward to the holiday or I'm looking forward to going to England. So be careful. You should always end your letters or emails by I'm looking forward to hearing from you, not I'm looking forward to hear from you. As learners of English, pay attention when you speak or write and make sure you sound grammatically correct. Stay safe. Peace.